Hi everyone, my name's Tris and this is Double O Neil. This episode is coming off the back of doing the work with the fueling area. Uh, you know, when the local works come in and get fueled up, uh, I feel I can move to the next stage, which is adding the, what would be the engine shed, the shelter uh, for the loco. It will sit on here. It would roll backwards after its day's work, drop itself in there to stay nice. Loco crew would get out um, and go have a, go have a pint down the pub. I'm going to make it from some plastic art. I'll be using some brick sides and some corrugated steel roofing. It will be made out of plastic sheets when we do this. And I want to kind of get something together that looks about right. If I don't like it, I can always make it again. The idea then is to have some hard standing on the outside of it, so like a path, um, which we can always add on some pathways afterwards and work out where paths are going. Because um, once that's done, we can do some ballasting. On the inside of the shelter as well, I want to put some hard standing so there won't be sleepers going in um, on, on the edges. So we can put some plastic card up there. And then underneath the, the loco, where the sleepers would be on the center of the track, um, I feel like, yeah, maybe we put some plastic card on there um, just to represent that. We'll see some sleepers underneath um, on those little gaps, but you're not really gonna see it from that, that front viewpoint anyway. So that's something that we're gonna start with and we'll see if the episode comes to anything else. Again, all these episodes, I've tried to make them kind of the 15 to 20 minute mark just to kind of, just not overdo it on each video for myself to keep entertained, you know, doing the projects and doing the videos um, and for yourselves. You've got 15 minutes to watch this and get some great feedback from all of you. So thank you to everyone that's been watching and giving me fantastic feedback. So thank you. Um, so let's carry on. So I'm going for something like this. It's something really simple. So you've got main construction. It'll be made from my plan at the moment is brick. Looking at what I've got, I'd like to have a little side building. Um, and what I'm actually going to do for the side building, even though the main building I will draw out a brick, I'll use, um, effectively rob um, this out of the Weybridge hut kit. Um, so I think that would be good. And it'll be stone. The view would be that they had it built later on. There was some stone kind of they had access to and they build that up. So I think that would kind of add an extra kind of look to the, to the unit. So that will be there. Uh, the roofing, I was talking to my friend Carl about it, about using corrugated uh, steel kind of roofing. Uh, I've got a sheet here, just change the view, um, which arguably isn't enough there. Um, it might be enough, but I've got two nice sheets, or three, no, two nice sheets of the tiles that Pico do. And on top of that, I can use the building details pack from Will's kits that I've been using. So we'll have all the guttering if we want to go ahead and put that on and the bit that finishes off the roof that goes in between. So that should be really, really good. What I'm gonna use for the sides when I'm doing the brick is this kit. I've got all these bits from Tony's Trains of Rugby, um, but we've got this round round top windows and you get a sheet, I'll just flip it over. Um, you get all the bits inside it and the governs. I thought maybe that will make the main construction. Really the whole thing only needs to be as long as this loco. So as you can see, this would fit in here perfectly. And here we've got the sheet here. So it looks like I just need to trim out um, these bits to, to make it all work. Um, I guess it's just from how it's all molded. So yeah, so we'll trim that out. We're gonna stick it together, get your instructions there. So I'm gonna put it together. It looks like where the loco will be here. So you can imagine that, um, that'll work out quite nicely, I think. That will sit like this. Um, I'm wondering if I put some thin brick on the inside of it as well. So it looks nice from looking outside in, you know, because otherwise you're only gonna see this and that's not so pretty, is it? Um, or is that a painted wall? Not sure, but I think it would just be brick on the inside as well as out. So I've got to the point that I've got the entrance cut, the back and the two sides. I'm going to stick them together. I'm going to put the windows in after I've painted it. So then I don't have to paint the windows again. They can just be painted white. If you look at here, we have our diesel. This is one hand. Um, basically, I've got a little bit of room each side. I'm not sure if I'm going to bother putting doors on or just leave it open. Or we add doors after. I've got, got a few thoughts on what I want to do. But I think I'll just leave them off to begin with. That'll be our 
front piece here i might put a thin bit of plastic card across the top to act as that i can't remember the name of it you know the bit that strengthens it this the I don't know, I need to come up with a fancy name, but the concrete piece that goes across the top there. So I thought I can get buffed up there. So I'm going to stick it together and then I need to add in the roof that will be going on here. So I'm going to have some shadow angle going on there for that to then come down. What I've just had to do before sticking it all together, I wanted to cut out the angle for the roof. So I realised I need to stick a little bit on top to, to create that. So I thought I'd show you that you show you that so you can see the stage I met. Um so yeah, that, that should should work out nicely. Go to this stage. Just want to make sure everything's glued square. If you've got one of these mats, it's always nice because you can use the straight edges that are showing here to line things up once you've glued, so then you don't end up with a funny shaped part. I'm gonna put some little eye beams in across here. Um, I think structurally that would be in the normal practice to do. Um, so I thought, let's do that. And something, something fun about that too. So I've put some I-beams in. So I've got the detail on the side running across. So I'm going across the top there. Just one main pillar there actually to offer a bit of stability on the tops of the, <laughs> the triangles. I'm sure there's normally you have the gable ends. So um, they go over the top of it. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of really happy with, with it, kind of how it looks. So with the loco in there, obviously it's off centre at the moment, bring it over there, you know, when you can look at it from there, I'll just yeah, so you'll get a kind of a nice imposing view there, so inside the building you've got some detail to pick up, some I-beams going across, and you know, we have some little um, workshop units on the side, uh, so you know, you can grab your tools out if you need to, and at the back, so I'm kind of pretty happy about that, with the loco in all the way, just slide it in there, um, you know, we've got a little bit of room at the back. Um, there is a little bit of room each side for something, some workbenches, one bit. But of course, we are minimised um, because of the room um, that we've got on the layout. So no one's going to be judging me too much, I think, if there's not too much going on on the inside. So now the next step will be to add the roofs. Yes, I need to add the little bit of plastic card across here, which I'll do next. Um, but then I'll work on the, the roof pieces, which I want to be able to take off so we can do some work on the inside of this. Um, the idea of adding some lighting, maybe dim at that, but some lighting later on. Um, so having access to adding some bits in here will be very handy. I've built up the roof out of a different material because the tiles that I had were only as long as the piece that I glued in there. I needed a bit each side. I don't want to glue a bit on the end have a line and then the corrugated sheet that I've got also I wouldn't have it looking like symmetrical with the shape each side however I cut it out and I forgot and I was looking for it and I found it I had the sheet by Evergreen scale models put a styrene sheet I think I got this from Tony's he had loads of the sheets um so yeah I picked this up thinking oh I use that one day and um I think I got it from Tony's, if not, I don't know where I got it from. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's that. So I've used that and uh, chopped out a bit each side. It's currently drying. Um, and then once that's done, because you've got the bit in the middle, which would normally have a, some form of cover, dropping things around. I've got a bit of paper, slightly thicker quality paper, but I think you'll be fine whatever you decide to use. Um, and I'm going to super glue that in place on the top here. And then I'll paint this all black. I'll paint everything black and then I'll come back because I want all the girders to be red. Um, I'm going to come back and then spray the red over the top afterwards um, and then maybe mask off the girders so they stay stay black anyway at least. Um, and then we can paint it off and make it look nice. Um, do the windows like I said afterwards. So um, the windows, um, I might not even bother painting these because they're white. Um, and then they can stick on and then I can put some uh, acetate sheet behind or use some clear packaging from you know these these packages have got two uses because you can use that um the acetate sheets that they use to make the packaging as the window that's all sprayed up got the roof done don't worry about the kind of difference there when i run a i think i can matte varnish over it, it should get rid of it um i masked off I'm stuck a bit to the paint the, the eye beams apart from the one at the back i forgot about that one um, but the idea is when you have a little glance here, you'll see that it's, you know, 
there's eye beams in there. So I'm gonna probably touch that up with a paintbrush and that should be fine. Um, yeah, let's do that. I'll go through the stage of painting these bricks if I, as I've shown you before, using my um, Dun and Rowney paints. Kind of go through, um, yeah, these are the ones that Dan Everson from Tunnel Lane Motor Railway showed me. Um, and just work my way around and just add a bit of color to it. I'll use some matte varnish lacquer then to seal it all in and then I'll use um, titanium or buff titanium as the mortar. I'll show you a tiny bit of it but I think you would have seen it on the um, the wall that we did previously but if you haven't seen my videos before I'll put a few bits in for you to see. So I've done one side already um, so I'm using I like the colours that I just talked about, but I'm also using like a creamy um, acrylic and uh, cavalry brown. Cavalry brown is kind of like a nice um, brick kind of colour. And so you'll, you'll probably collect a few of these over time. So kind of with one end of the brush, don't put too much on, so take a bit off. Back end of the brush, I've got a bit of an angle brush here. And kind of like take off the rest there. And all we're going to do, is, as on camera, it will probably go terribly now, but basically just work my way around it. And the nice thing is, is any colours that are too bright, obviously we've got a darker bit there, um, we can just keep adding in and it will kind of bring that colour up anyway because it will mix with it as you're doing it, it doesn't dry in seconds and also you can paint over the top which is always an advantage here. So you can add this nice blotchiness in and you can work your way over it, obviously with that colour um, and then you come with your other one. You don't want too much on the brush because Kind of fills up the gaps and everything with these detail. So just work your way around. You can add the other colours, bit of orange here, um, but the orange kind of dies off quite quickly. You just bring up the tone quite a lot. So you work your way over. Um, then, like I said before, um, we use some matte varnish lacquer, and that seals off the surface. So when we add the buff titanium in there, and then we wipe off the excess, we don't end up rubbing off what we've just painted. Don't be afraid to maybe give it two coats. Let it dry thoroughly. We want it to go hard before we do the buff titanium. If you don't, you end up rubbing off the lacquer and all that hard work you've done is you just end turning your part pink in the end. So that's that. If you've got any areas, like I said, that you don't like, it's too, too creamy for the brick. And then obviously come back in with a darker color. If you feel that, oh, that's a bit too um, bright, you know, obviously a bit too dark, you can add a bit in. The main thing is adding the lack of uniform kind of looks to it with colors. I've varnished this and I've started doing some of the um, paintwork where we add in the mortar, which is some of the buff titanium from Dalla and Rolney, like I showed you before. Um, so we're just using it, I water it down quite a lot. So we've got quite a bit of moisture added to it, but obviously if you go too far, you lose pigments and then you lose color. You might do some of this and feel, well, it's not done it enough. You can come back and do a bit more. But look at real buildings, sometimes you can't even see the mortar that's in there. And not all mortar's nice and clean like this, you know, this is mortar um, that's looking very fresh, but there's an argument that, you know, you could darken off some colors and that's where we can do some weathering later. So all you do is you run in here and you can see it going into the cracks really, really nicely. And the nice thing about the wheel sheets is the cracks are quite, well, there's quite a deep recess to them. So you could say the, the bricks are prominent. So we'll just run it over here. I think you don't need to worry too much if it dries a little bit. You, you can always aggravate the, the top layer off with some watered down paint, but I wouldn't recommend going through that stress. If you really had to do it, maybe some airbrush thinners um, would be enough to kind of stimulate it into working again. So we'll just stop there, we're halfway. All I do is I've got my bit of cloth, cloth, cloth of tissue and we just wipe off the excess. And, You've got to be careful in one way because you end up taking out of the recesses of what you've just put in. So don't be afraid to just kind of leave a little bit of it on there because a lot of the pigment doesn't really show up once it dries. Um, so it's going to take it off the main area. And you also notice on some buildings you see the mortar on top of the bricks from time to time where they've not been super tidy making it. So you just work your way over, super, super easy and kind of pretty fun to do as well. Like just have a go, get some of the brick sheets and have a go at doing this without doing it on the building, you know, and then you can have a go at these techniques. The Slater's sheets, they're quite thin, so it's a little bit more tricky to get it um, as nice as this wheel stuff, because the wheel stuff, again, it's, you know, it's over a millimetre thick. So you end up having this 
um, yeah, a, a bit of a treat with this stuff because the way that it drops in, like I said. Um, and if you're really not happy and you feel that you've ruined the bricks and you've left too much of the cream colours on, you can always go back over and rework, you know, adding in those colours of brick and then re-varnish it or whatever. Or you just leave it and forget about it. That's your other option. <laughs> and uh, you never give up on these things. But just make sure, like I say in other videos, you just need to make sure you're having fun when you're doing these exercises. Like I've said before many times, um, some of these techniques are the techniques that Dan Everson from Tunnel Lane Model Railways has shown me, and I'm grateful. Um, people, a lot of time people do this with enamels, um, and I don't like using enamels. Whereas with the acrylics, it's friendly, it can dry nice and quickly, and you can get these jobs done yeah, just fast, really. So I let a lot of that dry. I've taken off the bulk of it. The mortar is showing there. It's looking good. Everything's looking quite patchy. Um, and that will dry. So I'll do the whole of this um, and go from there. One thing I will say is I've done the roof and obviously it was painted black with the obviously the primer. Um, and then all I did was use a dry brush with a grey and all we did was dust over here, making it pick up the edges with the paint. Not much paint on it. Get to the point that you can show your skin texture. That there's barely any paint on here. Then you work your way over. And I kind of like dashed it around, tried to make it look just patchy, like a weathered roof. I might even add some powders at some point, but man, that looks nice. Got the paint on, put the windows in. Painted the inside here, it's a bit messy, it's still drying. And um, so from initial glance, two foot away, so something over there it looks nice, right? So you can you can enjoy it. One thing I've done, because I want to add lights later and work on the details once this is stuck on the layout, is I've made the roof have magnets on. So look magnet there, magnet there, inside there, inside there, but super glue. Okay, so that now won't fall off. You have to a bit of pressure. And it finds itself. So yeah, no, really happy with that. I'm gonna put magnets on the um, wonderful petite properties buildings that I have. Um, so then I can do things with them later on. So that's that now done. I'm gonna put the other little building together. Um, but I don't think I'm going to use it because I have this window here. I can't have the little hut coming off the side of there. So I'm going to have a think about it, but I'll probably give it a miss on that other one because it would need to be as tall as here. So I'll probably have to build a custom window. So I think we'll leave this alone. We just have this for, for this episode. I'm kind of really happy with how this has come on. The shed is in place. I'm kind of really happy with how that's going to come up nicely. I think we could probably weather it if we really wanted to. So yeah, I'm kind of really pleased with how it's all kind of, it's looking, um, to be fair. Got the houses in there, or the, the warehouses. We're coming closer and closer to the point of, you know, putting some ballast down and everything. So yeah, really happy. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you to all my patrons, channel members, the subscribers commenters and likers thank you so much for your support and your comments it's very much enjoyed and thoroughly re like reading them um yes there's things missing like gutters and bits and bobs on these um things that i've done but i'll add them on later just remember this is fun you need to enjoy yourself and uh yeah you take care Bye bye